mother and daughter each had a $10 million motive for murder as the detective saw it. But Sergeant Terry Wilson was focusing on Narcy. He knew he didn't have enough to charge her with her husband's death, at least not yet. She had an alibi for the assumed time of the murder. The case against her was circumstantial. So someone else must have gotten into the room and killed her husband. But who? Then seemingly out of nowhere, an anonymous letter fluttered onto the desk of a detective a thousand miles away from the crime scene. Miami Springs, Florida investigator Gary Fetters personally knew nothing of the Ben Novak case, and his department wasn't involved. There's people obviously that heard the name and knew about him, the Fountain Blue and all. I wasn't one of them. I didn't know anything about it until I talked to Detective Wilson in uh, New York. The letter, written in Spanish, was nothing less than a blueprint to the murder, naming names, citing motivations. This is shocking, and it could be a big break. Sergeant Wilson up in Westchester couldn't wait to see it. Whoever wrote this letter obviously had information, inside information. Looking back, that, that letter had the whole story. The greed, the inheritance, the obstacles in the way of the inheritance. The facts of that letter were on the money. Here's the gist of the letter. It claimed Narcy's brother, a man named Cristobal Valise, had hired some thugs to kill Ben Novak Jr. Sergeant Wilson and his team paid an unannounced visit to the brother at his place in Philadelphia. We apparently had caught him off guard. And uh, he invited us in, told us to sit down, and he'd be more than happy to answer any questions we had. And as we sit down, we sit at this kitchen table, and the kitchen table is littered with papers. Wilson and another detective spied something atop the heap. There's Western Union receipts, and this is all right out in the open. This is too good to be true. Uh, like, pinch me. And uh, we're holding the conversation with him, trying to not focus on the table because we don't want to draw attention to it. When Narcy's brother briefly left the room, Sergeant Wilson's partner furiously copied down names, dates, and receipt numbers. Why would Narcy's brother, a bus driver just scraping by, be wiring loads of money to one particular person in Miami? One of the names on the receipts is Garcia, is that right? Alejandro Garcia. But the surname Garcia in Miami is like being a Murphy in Boston. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it is. They began running it all down, and security cameras picked up Narcy's brother wiring the money from Philly, but at the receiving end in Miami, the cameras were on the fritz. No luck in getting pictures of this Garcia guy picking up the money. So they moved on to the brother's cell phone records and found frequent calls to a woman in Miami. Turns out the phone belonged to Garcia's ex-girlfriend, and he'd been using it. They talked to her. Where the big break came was she said that he had a, a defective eye. A Garcia with a bad eye. The database search was narrowed. Well, now we have some sort of physical description to see if this individual was arrested, and lo and behold, he was. So a Garcia with a uh, bum eye comes out of the database. pops up. And, and that's it. And we get a photo. Now the detectives were on a roll. With Alejandro Garcia's mugshot before them, they re-racked those hotel security tapes from the day of the murder. This is the main entrance. Here they come. Bingo. There was Garcia in the dark shirt with somebody else. His ex-girlfriend said he always wore sunglasses to protect his bad eye, but he wasn't wearing them on that day. And you see the two of them walking very fast out. Alejandro has the bag. Alejandro doesn't have his glasses on anymore. With the broken frames which are now. Well, apparently, uh, as the victim reacts to the assault, he, he hits Alejandro in the face, breaking the glasses. The glasses fall onto the bed. They rewound the tapes even further back to the first day of the convention, and there they were again. Garcia in sunglasses and a yellow shirt, and the other guy casing the hotel. In one chilling scene, they check out their future victim, Ben Novak Jr., in the lobby. And in less than 48 hours, they're going to murder this guy. And that's 48 hours they're going to this guy. The second man is ID'd as Joel Gonzalez of Miami. Wilson and his team had two targets and started with the apparent leader, Garcia. We started to hunt him down. The Miami hunt didn't take long. Garcia was picked up on an outstanding warrant. The New York cops braced him. Garcia denied ever being in New York. He's on video in the hotel. Detectives had some surprises to smoke out their one-eyed suspect. They showed him stills from the security cam footage, 
Garcia and his suspected accomplice in the hotel. The capper was a tape recording of a phone call between a detective and Narcy's brother Cristobal. In the call, Narcy's brother, sounding all cooperative, says he wants to help the cops and gives them the name Alejandro Garcia as a person good for the murder. Garcia listened silently as the brother threw him under the bus. Cristobal told me who, who did the murder. Cristobal told me you, you did it. He says I haven't harmed anybody. He denied being the hitman in that interrogation, but the message was clear. Get on board now, confess, or take the fall. He's going to be booked on charges of murder. Meanwhile, the evidence against Narcy's brother was piling up. Cell phone tower records showing him near the hotel on the morning of the murder. Evidence he'd provided a getaway car and driver. Who was in charge of this gang, the conspirators? The street boss that was handling everything uh, that was going on was uh, Cristobal Beliz. And who was the boss of bosses? With a $10 million motive, there was only one answer for the cops. Narcy Novak had ordered the hit on her husband. Obviously, he reported to Nar Narcy or worked at the direction. What started as a small suburban village investigation was now a multi-state conspiracy case. The decision was made to let federal prosecutors take the complex conspiracy to trial. The suspected hitman Garcia and Gonzalez were offered a deal testify against Narcy and her brother, or go away to prison for what would likely be life sentences. The two confessed to being the hitman in a murder-for-hire scheme. Then Garcia shocked the prosecutors. There was something else, a second murder they didn't know about. And if they didn't act fast, he said, a third was on the way. Coming up. Just who was in the crosshairs? There was a hit out on me. This detective's personal quest to save this daughter in danger. And coming up next Friday on Dateline, their relationship made headlines. She was an NFL cheerleader and a teacher who this week pleaded guilty to having sex with a teenage student. I knew I was doing something wrong. Yet you still did it. Right. Now, she's telling Dateline the whole story. And for the first time, so is he. When you heard the police are investigating, I would just lay in my bed and cry. And coming up in two weeks. Don't touch him. Do not touch him. You are illegally selling these drugs. Is there anything else you want to say? He's back. Chris Hansen is undercover. This on. time in the wild, wild world of online want ads. Almost anything is a click away. Even a possible hitman. I got a problem with a guy. OK. And I got to take care of it. OK. A Dateline undercover investigation. What do you want to happen to him?